this 9% uh, interest rate, I'm mm -hmm. wondering because if you sign an agreement and it stays at 9% at this stage, mm -hmm. one wonders, it, it will not stay at 9%, it may not stay at 9% forever. So it could either go up or come down. But in most cases, things go up and yeah, usually don't come down, define the law of physics. But why didn't you just start with something, say, 7 8%? When we spoke with when we spoke with the CBN, the, the CBN actually explained to us one of their scheme that works, you know, and said if we also need to get the financial financial institutions become part of this program, they also must enjoy some benefits for the work they will take. Now, enjoy some benefits for the work they will take. In that particular scheme that is run by the CBN, you get 9% distributed as 5% for cost of funds and the remaining 4% for the return to that particular bank, you know, for participating in the scheme because there are resources that will be deployed into that program. For us, we see it as fair, you know, and the fact that it is single digit would ordinarily demand some kind of uh, some kind of action from our people because it won't be free. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you know? Sing a okay. single digit, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's as closest to double <laughs> digits as you can get. Uh, but yeah. looking at you know the, the MOUs you've talked about, you've talked ex you've spoken extensively about this particular one. Yes. There are a host of others you're going to be signing today. Yes. Would you kindly shed a little more light on that? Okay, um, we have. A memorandum of understanding will be signing on a gas terminal being built in Bielsa. And also a mini LNG plant will LP, LPG. LPG plant. You know, you had the minister Minister's yesterday talking about LPG. And this particular organization, it's called, it, they're in conjunction with BP. You know, BP would actually be the off taker for the products they would purchase. Now, it's called Banner Energy. And Banner Energy right now has entered into agreements with LNG to receive gas, you know, from their facility. And they already are converting cars in Lagos and Abuja to, uh, to use gas instead of use fuel. And that's why the minister was mentioning yesterday that there's some taxi drivers that already have gas. And because of the benefits they get, they're trying to hold that information from their other colleagues getting. So for us, we actually have discussed with this group. We find the project one that ordinarily would be, um, it would provide good returns to investors. And you know, like all oh, for us as a state, we actually intend to co-invest in projects we see have very good returns. That's why we have the BDIC. The BDIC is actually that investing arm for us. And for us, the fact that there is opportunity to get a good return, it also gives opportunity for us to get another type of income coming to help us meet our social needs. So in terms of this new fuel you're planning to, are you planning to use it here or you're planning to um, take it out to neighboring st states? Here, here the, out, the larger Nigeria, and also out of the country. Because it would actually be a terminal for gas, wet gas, LNG, mm -hmm. you know, LPG. So it's actually, it's actually, it will actually be a hub, you know, for any product relating to gas, mm -hmm. you know, and the fact that you have a BP as part of that project tells you clearly that it will definitely be developed to international standards. From these MOUs, you definitely have an idea of how many jobs you will be able to create. Mm -hmm. How many are you looking at? Okay, well, if we talk about just, um, I want to, let me relate the, um, this particular gas project to the brass fertilizer project. Mm -hmm. For the brass fertilizer project, that project would come on stream, well, the early works for that particular project has been awarded to Saipem. We as a state, we, we have 20% in that particular investment. 
And like you heard yesterday, the investment is worth $3.5 billion. Construction alone for the, that particular fertilizer plant will take about 36 months, according to the information we have. During that 36 month period, within that brass axis where the project will be built, they would require a minimum average, because sometimes they will require up to 15. Some other times they will require like eight. So average over the three year period, you would have a minimum of 10,000 workers working through that entire three year period. So for us, just that project alone, within the next three years, brings in additional 10,000 jobs. Which you believe local labor can supply? Yes, because, yes, because at that point in time, what you're doing is actually construction. It's, um, it's skilled, semi-skilled and unskilled. Skilled because there are certain aspects where you need to bring in some shapes and, you know, and have to fit certain things in a certain way. You know, but all of them, according to the plan by the company, most of these individuals, by the end of the year, they will send 1,500 of these people that would work in that um, plant to Italy for training for the next one year. You know, so these individuals, when they come back from Italy, they are the ones that would also now give further training to the people that will be employed within that particular facility. How long will that continue for? I mean, what is being done about ensuring that the curriculum in schools here will ultimately be able to impart or bring that quality, like, say, Niger Delta University, mm. Colleges of Education, all mm. of those skill acquisition centers. Mm. Are you doing anything to ensure that they, as well, can provide this quality manpower? OK, well, um, I know personally the plans by the governor to associate specific departments within Niger Delta University with foreign universities that have um, the best expertise for those departments. I know of plans like that. I know also of plans by the governor and the government to set up a new university from scratch, which will ordinarily be competitive with the best universities in the world. Because the whole idea of that particular university is to have the best faculty, to have the best resources, so people can actually pay to receive those things in Nigeria instead of traveling abroad. So is it going to be what, a university of technology or something? I don't know yet. But the particular departments and the uh, programs that the university would run, the committee that was set up by the governor would throw out what best name will suit that particular university. But it talks to the question that you have asked. You know, because over time, you will begin to find quality education at tertiary level that is currently lacking in the country. You begin to have it also in Bielsa. Now, if you see, and if you had heard some of the comments made by the governor yesterday, in developing manpower for the state, we are setting up also specific institutes to address specific sectors. For example, in tourism, we've put up so much investment in tourism, building hotels, you know, those hotels having very good restaurants within them. Now, to provide manpower for that particular industry, that tourism institute and hospitality institute, it's actually an international tourism and hospitality institute because we're also affiliating it with an international institution abroad so that the curriculum and the manpower for the institute would also be international standard. Okay. Then the products that will come out of it will not just serve only by Elsa, but would also serve the entire country. All right, well, we're out of time on this, but let's do this in 30 seconds if we can. If I get a C of O, if one gets a C of O sign, mm -hmm. before you think I'm applying for one, mm -hmm. if one gets one no, sign... No, I mean, you can apply for one. We <laughs> want you to come live in Bielsa okay. and also work here. If one gets one signed by the governor in 60 days, yes. 
does he have to bother himself or worry about boys who will come and tell you, no, before you get your roof to this level, you have to pay certain monies? Will he worry about that? No, 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 no. All of that doesn't happen in Bayelsa. And that's why you heard the governor yesterday commending the communities for the ease of work for the various projects happening within the state. Because everybody knows that they are beneficiaries of these actions, of these projects. You know, so if I get to say, oh, and I'm starting a business, clearly it may not be me alone that will do the business. Or employ one individual or something, you know. So no, no, it doesn't doesn't work. It doesn't All right, work. Uh, there you have it. Uh, Cyril Akika is a special advisor to Bayasa State Governor on investment. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you for having me. So the ball is in the people's court out there. Who will pull all these policies to test? But this is where we draw the curtain today on the program. We thank you all for watching. I'm Chamberlain also. Well, thank you. I'm Maupe Ogun. For many thanks, I'm Slyman Alede. Bye bye.